Hey guys, Bart from TST Industries here. In this video, we're gonna show you how to install this TST Industries integrated tail light on a 2013 and up Kawasaki Ninja 636 ZX6R. This is a fairly straightforward installation. Let's begin. So in the first step, we'll be removing the passenger seat. Once that is gone, we will be removing these six fasteners. To do that, we will use a four millimeter Allen. All right, and now we will remove this rear portion that holds the light from above. What we will do is slide it back on an angle. And it also helps if we spread the tail fairings. All right, so the reason why I went in this direction is because there is a slide clip here that engages with the tail light. And the reason why I spread the tail fairing is because the tail fairing engages a clip into this slot. So now that this is done, I'm gonna grab a 10 millimeter box wrench. Mine has ratcheting capability, it's very handy. I will now undo the two 10 millimeter screws on either side of the tail light here that attach the tail light into the under tail. So now on this side, this screw will also be holding down a wire routing clip. So once that comes out, it'll bring the wire out with it. I'm just gonna unbend it, release it from the wire, and take that out. So at this point, we'll need to find the plugs, and they are located under this left tail fairing. And they're loose enough so that we could take them out to the top here. And uh, on this particular bike, the fender has been eliminated already. So the signal lights are not plugged in over here, but typically on a stock configuration, you would have the signals plugged into the black and gray plug here. So for this install, we'll only be focusing on this three conductor plug. And I will grab a flathead press on the lock on this plug and remove it. And that's your tail light plug. And now you can route that to the inside of your trunk. And voila, tail light comes out. At this point, I will need to remove these sh shoulder washers as well as these rubber grommets. These will be necessary to mount our tail light into the bike with. And if these are being a pain, I can show you a trick using needle nose pliers. You can grab them like this. And if you spin it and remove it, it makes it really easy. All right, here we go. Now it's time to configure our TST Industries tail light for assembly on the bike. So we will start with inserting the grommets removed from the OEM unit into the same location on our light. And now we will insert the shoulder washers, just like that, and start assembly with the wires first, making sure that we get them to where they need to go. So I like to end up with these wires behind this tab. And now I can insert the tail light. 
And the trick here is to make sure that the step underneath the lens features ends up mating with these surfaces here on both sides. So this is how it should look. And it's very easy to incorrectly put it in a little too deep. In that case, it would look like this and it would not mount up properly. So let's revert to the correct orientation. There we go. And now we will plug in the taillight and test it before we proceed to screwing anything down. So working with this fairing here, you have to be very careful how much you flex it. If you want a little bit more access, you can remove this panel here that just comes up and it needs to slide in this direction. You be very careful when you do that. You don't want to snap off any of the tabs that engage these plastics together. And in this area, you have the seat pressing down on this fairing, so be extra careful here. So now I have a little bit more flex here. It'll allow me more access to these wires. I'm gonna grab my needle nose and Maybe pull out these plugs just a little bit. You don't want to pull against the wires. What, what I'm doing here is just pushing down on the boot to get access to the plug. Basically pushing down the boot around the plug instead of pulling on the plug. All right, so it looks like I have enough access here. Now I can begin plugging things in. Easiest one to identify is the main three conductor plug here. There's only one orientation for it to plug in. Press in until it snaps. That indicates that it's locked in. Now at this point, we need to figure out which one of these wires fits into the black or the gray. So to do that, what I like to do is power up the bike, turn on the left signal, and then try the combinations until I f find the right one. In this particular case, I lucked out and I got it on the first shot. Once again, I'm gonna press these in until they make a little snapping noise and then they're locked. So now I will push this boot back in place here, making sure that it's hidden within the well of the inside of this tail fairing. I'm gonna to proceed to screwing down those two 10 millimeter fasteners here. Remembering that this wire cable routing clip goes on the left side of the motorcycle. I'm gonna start by threading it in by hand, engaging the threads. And I'm gonna do that to the other side as well. Now the positioning for this routing clip is keyed by this tab around the hole through which it mounts. And that tab should end up here on the inside, towards the center of the bike on the inside of the tail light. So you wanna keep that there as you screw that down to, to bottom it out. And and bottomed out, it looks like this. Now I'm gonna grab my 10 millimeter wrench and tighten those down. I'm gonna exercise care here not to over tighten these connections. All right, and now I'm gonna make use of that wire routing clip put all the wires that I'm routing through the trunk area here into it and then clamp it down so that it does its job here and keeps my wires clear of the trunk area. 
at the moment I only have my integrated tail light wire loom and my license plate light wire here on your bike. If you still have pod signals or OEM signals, you will have two additional harnesses coming through here. All right, so now that's done. Everything's out of the way. You can proceed to reassembly of all the fairing components in the reverse order of disassembly, starting with this top tail center portion. So we'll slip this under the tail fairing. Now we'll make sure that this slide clip engages with the slot in our tail light. And also, let me show you this. There are also two slide clips here that engage with these slots on either side of the bike. So that also needs to slide together simultaneously as the rear clip penetrates into the tail light. So it's the same exact thing on both sides. And now just press firmly and then make sure that the tail fairing engages with this top tail center. And we could proceed to reinstalling the six um, fasteners. All right, so I'm gonna start in the back here. Be careful as you penetrate through these fairings into the fastener that the screw uh, screws into. On the bottom here you have well nuts. They are made of rubber and they have a threaded element inside this rubber. So you will not feel a hard stop. They, they expand like a mushroom rather underneath and they isolate some of the vibration while holding your fairings on. You don't want to over tighten them, you'll just damage them. So before I tighten down on any of these connections, I like to make sure I have alignment everywhere. All right, so I purposely left this panel out for now, along with the, these two fasteners. I want to show you guys what happens when you turn on the signal after you've changed your bike from OEM incandescent signals to LED type signals, you'll have a very rapid flash rate. And that is because LEDs draw much less current than OEM signals. And your stock signaling equipment is trying to tell you that there's a bulb out. So what do we do in this case? The tail light comes with a set of um, load balancing resistors. Those are free of charge, and uh, you, will, you would need to wire those into your signaling system to slow down the flash rate. They operate by fooling your, your stock signaling system into thinking that that current draw is there. The other option is installing one of our Gen 2 LED flasher relays. These are solid state, and they fit right here behind the driver's seat. This is why I left this this area open. The installation is really simple. There's no wiring involved. You just slip this unit off of its keeper here. And there is a plug that plugs into it. You'll press on the center of the relay and withdraw it. And then just take the OEM rubber keeper off of it. Slip it onto our TST Industries unit here. Plug that in. And now your signals will be flashing at a substantially lower rate. So these units come pre-configured to 85 cycles per minute. That is the OEM rate. You can see that flashing at the correct rate. These units are adjustable. You can watch our Gen 2 relay installation on this bike. Um, we have a separate video for that. In that video, we go over the procedure to adjust your flash rate to your liking. Um, at this point, I wanna show you that you can access the program button from the rear here 
actually front of the bike, rear of the capsule. The button is right here. When you press that button, you will toggle through the different pro programming options on this taillight. Right here, you see the standard uh, signal function. And now you can see the scanning or sequential signal. Also, right now you see the standard brake. And if you toggle through again, we've now turned the tail light to the strobe brake function. And the strobe brake will give you five blasts of light before it turns on solid. And that alerts the drivers behind you that you're stopping. So now, all that is left to do is to replace this last fairing panel, pretty much in the reverse procedure of this assembly, making sure that you don't crack these tabs off. You have to be very careful around the uh, driver's seat here. Once these engage, we will reinstall these two fasteners. Again, these go into rubber well nuts. Now, replace the passenger seat. Test the functions one more time. Right signal, left signal, brake. And now the bike is ready to go. Installation is complete. I hope you guys enjoy this taillight. See you next time.